All right, these are Dylan's, Dylan's images, and now I can show them to you. That, I believe, must be Venus. Look at the enormous amount of dipole activity in the polar fields. He's captured all of this stuff. Absolutely phenomenal. When I saw that, I freaked out. And the moon is not an emitter of white and black like the rest. It is it's a, a cold emitter. And the blue is more energetic than this side. Basically, that's all I can take away from this. And again, I am not an expert in this at all. This is very new. This is all, within a year we've been looking at this. And I mean, look at this. What the hell is this? What the hell is going on? This is obviously in front of the moon, or they are um, solar flares and things like that. But it's on this side of the moon. Now, where is all this other stuff? And when you see all the stars in the sky, where are they way, way, way back? Can we see any that's right in front of the moon? And I can see little bits and pieces. Let's, there's a lot to look at here. 100% dipoles. That's what I've been saying right along. It proves everything I've been saying about dipole flood theory. Same thing, dipole. Look at this. Dipoles everywhere. And what the hell is this up here? It looks like a pyramid. And this thing here looks like a thing that shot something out into outer space the other day. Now these pictures go quite a ways back before this interaction the other day. Of um, something shot out of the earth and, and tried to hit the trail of Comet Leonid that was coming at us. All right, I'm going to read you this. This is from Dylan Carpenter. He's Rod's nephew, Rod Warren. I've talked about a bazillion times, who came up with the Venturi that showed us the particles and proved that light is, is a dipole. Now, this, I cannot go home in on each one of these shots. I'm just going to come right down to where he explains what he's using. He says, the images are of the moon using a 108 megapixel camera. He rendered the picture using high definition rendering. He says, I'm not sure why, but takes almost no rendering to see what it does. I'm not sure if it's the stars or whatnot, but seems to be capturing something unseen by the naked eye. Yes, absolutely. And he's got 0 0.8 microns. Now, this 108 megapixel sensor from Samsung is comparatively comparatively huge next to its competitors see this and should be able to capture unprecedented detail with the right implementation and it does amazing a few excerpts about the camera capabilities galaxy s20 ultra is definitely a smart sensor camera with a high megapixel count but in the context of phone cameras the sensor is actually pretty huge samsung is using the same 0.8 micron pixel size from its 48 to 64 megapixel sensors then linearly increasing the physical surface area to arrive at 108 the result is a one to one 0.3 inch sensor which is bigger than the one in Nokia's Iconia Illumina 1020 though still a little smaller than the one in its 808 PureView predecessor given the, one, the 108 aperture these 108 megapixel phones should have more pure light gathering capability than basically anything on the market now that doesn't mean noise isn't a concern. The 0.8 microns is still pretty small for an individual pixel. For comparison, the phone 11, iPhone 11 has 1.4 microns, so that's quite a bit larger. Though its 12 megapixel sensor is much smaller at 1 and 2.55 inches, obviously a lot lower in resolution. To avoid noise, higher resolution phone sensors combine data from neighboring pixels into one, reducing the resolution of the resulting image, but theoretically increasing image quality in situations with bright light. Meanwhile, you have the option to shoot at full resolution for greater detail. Greater light capturing capabilities, perhaps. 
and then he says he's not sure if it's picking up light from near or distant stars, but I'm doing anything technical like Rodney and shining lasers into lenses. He's not doing anything technical like Rodney's doing, shining lasers into lenses or doing double slits and all that business. He's just using the 108 micron in a periscope lens that is also built into that phone. I then rendered to make it more high definition, which is utilizing and using all the pixels captured. So, it seems to be capturing things that the naked eye cannot. Yes, I absolutely agree. And he's got all of these fabulous shots. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Dark matter. Yes, absolutely. Um, and he's, uh, you know, he's got some pretty good stuff here. I mean, I'm going to show you the some of the stuff. I can't click on each one of these images because it'll bring me into Never Never Land. Uh, i got to start all over again looking at his stuff. But this is, you know, he's he's got some really serious, serious stuff going on here. And he does, I don't know. He says the images, though, through email are far better, over 10 million pixels. Whatever that means. If I send me an email, I can send full quality. Okay, so I, I I see what he's doing. I sent him my email, so then he can send the full quality, 10 million pixels. And, uh, you know, we went quite, quite through a lot. Okay, I got this sent to me probably 10 times or more about this NASA satellite detected something massive between the Earth and planet Venus. This is just a couple of days ago. <clears throat> and this is the Earth, this is Venus, this is the Sun, apparently. Now, this is Comet Leonid, uh, Leonard, or however you want to pronounce it. And it comes across here, and it looks like it almost impacts with Venus. But watch what it emits from the Earth. I have a complete video on this. And then look at what the trailing thing here. There's nothing. This is all output from the sun that we're plowing through. And it's shrouding us from the particles that the sun emits. I mean, it's just enormous amount quantities of debris coming out of the sun. Now watch this. And again, I have a full video about this interaction. But watch. We're pulsing on and off, on and off, on and off. And then, boom, out comes this. Watch. Here it comes. Exactly timed to interact with the tail of that comet. How the hell did that happen? And there's a big bomb. It's right in the middle of it. And pretty much protects us from it. We still got whacked. And, but... All right, we're going to go over this in, in big detail because a lot of Dylan's shots show a very, very similar tapestry of what we got going on here. So anyway, we're going to get deep into it. And this is what Fermilab is looking for. Don Lincoln is looking for these particles, the muons and the electron showers, and we created them. So I'd love to talk to Don Lincoln, and um, he's just not interested in speaking, but I'd love to speak. I got things to show that I think are very, very important to his mission. Okay, you all know that I accelerated light, Rod, Warren, and I, and Dylan, we're getting this stuff pretty, pretty well down now. Accelerated light, split the photons into the muons and electron neutrinos, and then the electron showers, and the muons just stayed there. Now they became sterile muons, new, uh, neutrons, neutrinos. And they came back here. These are white showers, exactly what CERN and uh, Fermilab is looking for. So the next video is going to be fun. We're gonna, you're going to you're going to understand a lot that is totally missed right now. And they have they, they don't even take into account all these particles in space. You know, I said all of these things must be stars in the background, but when I'm looking at it a little closer, why? This is our Earth. This is the sun spitting out. I think these are the particles the sun is spitting out. We never realized. Because why is it not here? There's no particles here. We're in a way. So whatever this is, it's coming at us, and is, we're blocking it, as far as I can determine. Now, which makes sense to me because of the pulsation of the earth flashing and getting dark and light. We would glow, it would grow a bigger and bigger charge and then flip just exactly the way the electrons do. I mean the photons do. And really, really, as far as I'm concerned, we're nothing more than particles in space. These are all particles. And we're scrubbing through these particles. That's what's heating our atmosphere and causing global warming. 
and it could slows down a light so Hubble stuff is not right we've accelerated light we've done all those things we've shown this hundreds of times regular laser light light accelerating I don't care how you cut it it's accelerating if it's in a vacuum it would I don't care if it's in a vacuum or not you can't accelerate light if it's got a maximum speed in a vacuum might you might be I mean outside of a vacuum might be able to slow it but you're never going to speed it up this is speeded up this is fission right here this is fusion here this is atomic energy for free we didn't do anything whatsoever to accelerate to make that light explode like that all we did was put in two little round pins here straight pins and made it so tuned that only the white could get through not the black it separated it and this would have what it would have would have been like right here the black and the white but we separated them at the venturi as which I showed all right and here's here's what it looks like coming up to the venturi Oops. That's, it's, yeah, that's when it starts. Well, here, let me show you accelerate. I probably did, but maybe not. There's the wave. Back here, you can't see anything. You know, there's nothing back there. There's almost no light whatsoever. And then it starts to accelerate, and it starts to speed up. And then the actual particle exceeds its magnetic wave. That's just phenomenal. I can't even understand how it's possible, but I can see it. I see the particle coming ahead of the wave. It, what else can you take of it? Now, what happened here? The particle separated because the venturi is so tiny that only the white stuff can get through because that can squish. The black cannot. We're going to get so deep into this, and I, I, I don't know how to present this in any more of a way than I have over years and years of doing this and having absolutely no interest from anybody to speak of. And I think I'm showing stuff that should be looked at. But I have no no power in this realm whatsoever. This is the white particles that squeak through. The black particles are dark matter, muons, whatever you want to call them. That's a photon. One is an electron. The other one is an electron back to back. They have a magnetic field around them. And I showed that thing accelerate and get beyond its magnetic field. And that's right here is the the particles that they this one's charging up and glowing this is what I believe is happening to our earth as we spin and one side of it charges up boof and then a the dark side shows up boof the white side and boof the dark side that's what we're seeing in the NASA films and somebody else explain it to me somebody else explain that to me 